get a YouTuber 669 here, I finally got a hold of a good camera so I can make videos now. Yay! So I want to dedicate my first video to uh, my vinyl collection, which I just recently started. I've always been a big fan of vinyl, but I never really just bothered with buying it until now, or a few months back at least. And I'm really glad I did, because now I can, you know, support music, and I just really loved having, you know, this old school feeling of having like a record in your, in your hands. So anyway, I'm going to share with you the records I bought, and let's start with the singles. This is the first single I bought, or the first vinyl I bought ever. And this is Queen Adrena's FM Doll. It's a, it's a seven inch, and it comes in red vinyl. Ooh, really cool looking. And it has FM Doll, which is short fuck me doll from uh, the Butcher and the Butterfly, as well as a B side, which is Kissing My Disgrace. And it's actually very good, kind of acoustic piece. I really enjoyed it. This is definitely a really good buy, I got it for super cheap, um, and I'm a big fan of Queen Adrena. If you're not familiar with them, they kind of play a hard rock, garage sounding, punkish um, style of playing with a female vocalist, which is really great. So if you're a fan of uh, hard rock, you should check this out. Next I got this, which is Keller Mensch's um, first vinyl, I believe, ever until they released their self-titled album on uh, vinyl as well. This is a single with Morbon Town and the Radiators and Army Ants. You might recognize the uh, artwork from the Narcissus EP. And it's kind of kind of a bummer that I didn't put in more Narcissus EP songs on here. Um, you could have had like 30 Silver Coins or Rattle the Bone instead of Morbon Town, which is from the original album. Which you can also get on vinyl now, so I didn't really see the point. But whatever, it's still a really cool buy. I'm a big fan of this band. If you're not familiar with Kalmensch, they are a post-punk band, I guess, from Denmark. And they have quite a varied style. They have a lot of influences from um, 70s classic rock to uh, metal and um, even like Tom Waits and stuff like that. So next we got the recent, most recent single I bought, which is... Gold Line by the Yes. And I started listening to the Yes when I was in ninth grade. When I heard like Gold Line on MTV. And MTV was good. But I guess it wasn't too good back then either, but whatever. It's a really cool looking 7 inch. You can see it has pictures on both sides, which is really cool. And here's Gold Line, and here's a acoustic track called Let Me Know, which is really great. I really love that. I think the Yes, yeah, they have a lot of. Uh, Great tracks, but they're hard to find, like uh, ceilings on the Spider-Man Free soundtrack. That movie sucks. It kind of sucks that an awesome song is on that soundtrack. So next we got a 10-inch. We're moving up from 7-inch to 10-inch, which is kind of weird because I've never seen the 10-inch before. Um, this is How to Destroy Angels, um, self-titled EP. This is Trent Reznor from uh, Nine Inch Nails. And his wife, and another guy, his name escapes me now, but this is a side, pro side project, and it's actually really cool. Um, it's not too different from Nine Inch Nails, but it's similar in, in to newer Nine Inch Nails, but it also has a lot of new factors, like um, Trent Reznor's wife, but she has a really weird name, so there is M Mary Queen Mandig. I'm sorry, I probably butchered that name, but... Uh, her voice is really cool, um, it's very soft spoken, really brings the mood to a lot of the songs on here. And it, it's quite, it's it's a bit more softer than Nine Inch Nails, but it's definitely a really, really, really solid electronic album. So if you're a fan of uh, Nine Inch Nails, you should definitely check this out. Or if you're a fan of uh, electronic music overall. So next we got my most recent buy, which I had to, this is my local record store to buy because I couldn't find this online. And that is Pearl Jam's 10 original version. I'm a big fan of Pearl Jam. Um, I've been for a while. And this is definitely my favorite record from them. If you haven't heard Pearl Jam, you should Google it because they're a pretty famous band, so you should know what Pearl Jam is. Um, yeah, it, 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 I think this is a re release, but it, it is definitely the original. I didn't want the uh, remix version, I wanted the original because uh, I don't know, I just, I just like it more. And yeah, there's nothing too special about this. I got it fairly cheap. 
has a cool flap it says Pearl Jam on it. And uh, here you can see like the lyrics and stuff like that and people who worked on the album. Pretty cool. Yeah, that 10 is definitely my favorite album. Kinda, in my opinion, feels like it went a bit downhill from there, but that's just my opinion. Let's move on to another of my all-time favorite bands, and this is the first album I ever heard from them, and that is Tool, with the album Undertow. Here it is, really dark looking cover art. Sorry for the light, but not much you can do about that. Um, in the back, it's a pig with um, this undertow on it, and there's like spoons and forks and stuff. <laughs> yeah, nothing special. Also, black vinyl. Um, yeah, this is not. This is Tool's first full length, I believe. This is this is before they started their more progressive career, so to speak. And because of that, a lot of people kind of. I'm not big fans of Anto, but this is the first album I've ever heard from them, and I just really fell in love with it. I believe the first song I ever heard from Tool was Swarm Song. It just really clicked with me right away, and I just really loved the album, so I had to get it on vinyl. Definitely must buy for me. So this is a band I used to listen to a bit to before, but I never really um, followed their career after that. That is Mastodon, this album. Crack the Sky, which is um, not their most recent release since uh, the Hunter is out now, but um, this album really clicked with me because it's, it, it has like 70s prog sound to it, it's really great. It just, they mix the elements of sludge and their, you know, sound with with 70s prog and it just fits perfectly. I just, I really enjoyed this album, so I just thought like, I might, I might as well get in the vinyl. It has really cool looking cover art. Also in black vinyl. I believe there's a two disc version, but I, I, I got a regular one. There's like a lyric sheet here as well, but nothing spectacular. But definitely a great album. Love me some Mastodon. Next, we got um, if you've seen my unboxing video, you know what this is. This is not a tool album, and I really want to get some mine because this is pretty fucking awesome. And that is. Tools Lateralis Limited Edition Vinyl has really cool looking shiny cover art as you can see Bayer AS same way in the back this is really cool um, not really my favorite Tool album um, as far as their progressive albums go but I really enjoyed this and I just thought like you know this is like an awesome vinyl buy because this is definitely made for like vinyl collectors. Really cool artwork in here as well. The human body. Here's the other cover art on the disc. Really cool. I got this fairly cheap, even though it took a fucking while to get here, I was still, you know, satisfied with my buy because I really wanted this album for a long time as far as my vinyl buys go uh, just because it looks so cool it's definitely something to have in your vinyl collection so this next album is probably one of my favorite albums of all time by one of my favorite bands of all time which is, you know, reasonable since my first vinyl buys uh, you know, I want to buy the artist I really enjoy, so I don't know what that says about me, but it's Ouroboros by Deer and Grey uh, they are a Japanese band. It opens up like this. I actually had to order this in the States because I couldn't find this anywhere in Europe. Here it says, um, what does it say? Karma from nihility in one's own mind. Yeah. I haven't really read into that, what that means yet, but. So this is a really great album. Dear and Grey kind of really went into progressive metal with this one. Um, definitely changed the sound up a bit. Really went for something more different. Uh, they took a lot of inspirations from the earlier sound, mixed with a lot of new ones, and just, you know, just completely kind of went into more progressive style of playing. It is really cool. Use a lot of cool instruments here, like old school Japanese instruments and stuff like that. 
and it really sets the mood. It's fantastically mixed and overall has a great atmosphere to it. So if you're a fan of progressive metal, you should check this out. Finally, got one of my favorite bands as well, obviously. Um, and that is Opeth with Blackwater Park, which is the first album I heard from Opeth and just really made me fall in love with the band pretty much. Because it's it's a fantastic album. It's a great album to listen to for the first time if you want to get into Opeth. So I recommend checking Blackwater Park out. If you're not familiar with Opeth, um, they're a Swedish progressive metal band. Makes a lot of uh, kind of seventies classic rock and soft sounding music with a lot of like death metal style. Here's the band. You can also feel it doesn't have a beard here. It looks weird. And nothing spectacular on the back. Um, yeah, th this is definitely a great album. I I wouldn't say it's my favorite Opeth album, but it's the Opeth album closest to my heart. Um, maybe st Still Life is probably my favorite one. But that's a bit hard to get on uh, vinyl actually, but hope I'll do that eventually. So yeah, that was it for me. These are the vinyls I have bought so far. I still have a few which um, are in the mail, so to speak, I guess. Uh, they haven't been shipped yet, but once I get them, you'll see a new video from me. I'll tell you what awesome albums I bought. Bye!